everybody. It's Garp. And uh, just doing this video as a follow up to the uh, previous videos where I was doing some cabinet construction and uh, the woodworking around. Um, I had start, I've started the woodworking around the face frames. And I was working my way through some of the material this morning and thinking maybe I should shoot a little video on table saw my table saw techniques or lack thereof. <laughs> um, but um, I'm trying to create the pieces for the face frame of the cabinets that I built. And in the meantime, uh, since I did the last video where I installed a big upper cabinet, I built a smaller one below. And I uh, kind of stalled because I'm working on design on the left cabinets. So I haven't built them yet, the lower cabinets. Uh, I'm trying to work the kitchen design properly. But in the meantime, I didn't want to sit around with nothing to do. So I decided to build the face frames for the ones that uh, I already have, the, for the carcasses that I've already built, the boxes that I talked about. Um, so I was I was down here this morning trying to uh, find the right material. I use a vertical grain fur for the for the face frames of these cabinets because uh, um, the cabinets I've already built have face frames of, of vertical grain fur. I like the looks. It works with the aesthetics of what I'm trying to create in my kitchen. Um, but I'm very frugal. So I think I've said before, I save material uh, from jobs that I do and uh, would normally just throw, a lot of guys would normally just throw away. Some of that I give to my uncle to burn, you know, it's too small for me to use because he has a wood burning stove. Fuel is expensive. Uh, some I save because I know I'm going to be able to use it or think I'm going to be able to use it in the future. But what I found today was I had purchased a bunch of vertical grain fur. Uh, it was a closeout sale at a Home Depot a couple of years back, and I came across it. Nobody was buying it, apparently. It was 1x6 material. This piece is smaller. I ripped it down, but 1x6 material, I was able to buy a f quite a bit of it for about a third the cost. So I stockpiled it, knowing that I would be building these cabinets in the future. But still, I want to be frugal. Um, so I had uh, saved uh, material from some uh, outdoor porches that I built that was thicker but still vertical grain fur. It's actually a five quarter inch material. It's probably an extra quarter inch thicker than what I'm using for the face frames. But still, because it's going to, there's going to be short pieces that become styles in the face frame, I can use it if I rip it down properly so that, so that it has the same thickness when I'm done as the longer pieces that I have to rip from the stuff I bought. Um, kind of a convoluted way of telling you this. I am trying to explain this to a whole different crowd of viewers now. Uh, I've been talking to a couple of different people, um, answering questions about the blog. Uh, one in particular from England who is uh, wondering how I make my living. As opposed to a shout out to Daryl out there, a uh, young guy that uh, uh, is pretty much housebound most of the time, but uh, I thought this might interest him as well as everybody else. So I'm going to show you how I use my table saw. Uh, hopefully I don't cut some fingers off because this will become a horror show very quickly. But I'm basically going to take, I've already ripped down three of the four pieces that I need for the for the styles on the upper cabinet for a face frame uh, out of thicker material. This is the last piece. And that's when it occurred to me I probably could put this on video just as easily. So here we go. I'm going to rip it down to about three quarters of its thickness. I've already laid it out and marked out the side that I want to take off. And that's going to face the outside of the saw blade. The blade's all adjusted, obviously. And I always use a push stick, uh, just a cut-off piece of material, so I never get my fingers near the blade. In fact, I kind of, when I work a piece of wood, I have kind of uh, golden rules that once my thumb hits the front of the saw, I don't let it go past that. And I do make exceptions, but rarely. I always keep my fingers away from the blade. It's extremely dangerous, obviously. So here we go, because I don't want to run out of video.
the same thickness as the other material that I'm going to be using for the longer pieces. When it's salvaged, it's the same vertical grain fur. I don't know if you can see that, probably not in the light here. But it's going to be pretty when it's all sanded down and dressed up. And uh, that's a short, short video just to show you. You notice that I fed, it, fed the material through twice. I made it cut about halfway through first, flipped it over, and finished off the cut. You don't want to try to overdo it with a cut. It puts a lot of uh, friction on the blade and um, makes the saw work a little bit too hard. It gets kind of a little bit more dangerous, too. Uh, so it's just as easy to do half the cut, feed it through, work it over the other way, and finish the cut off, uh, uh, you know, up against the up against the fence of the, uh, the saw. If this was wider material, I think I could cut probably two and three quarter inches deep with this particular saw. But if this was wider material and I had it sticking up higher, I'd probably make a little jig to hold it upright because it's, in, it's really important you don't tip it back and forth through the blade, otherwise you end up with a mess counter cut, uh, cross cut, cross cut. Okay, well, uh, in a regular cut that's going to uh, affect the way it mounts to the other pieces of the frame. All right, better, better shut the video down. Uh, hi to everybody, and hope you're all doing well.